Hello everybody! Welcome to Creating the Basic Adaptable Game Engine Library, Part 60, Plane Dodger, Spawning Enemies. In this series of videos, we've started creating the game Plane Dodger, an infinite side-scrolling game inspired by the smartphone game Flappy Bird. Up to this point, we've created our infinite background scrolling effect, and we've also created the player-controlled plane, which appears to be moving to the right, although it's not really, it's because of the scrolling background. We've simulated gravity by continuously accelerating it downwards, and the player can press a key, which allows the plane to get a little vertical boost of speed moving upwards, and that helps the player control it. Our next step is going to be to add some kind of an obstacle. In this case, we're going to be spawning enemies. The main idea is that we'll have enemies spawn from the right-hand side of the screen, just barely off the screen, and then they will travel from the right side to the left side. And eventually, if the player hits one of these enemies, then the player will lose the game. But for now, we're going to worry about just spawning enemies. We'll also talk about a difficulty ramp. We'll make them move slightly faster as time goes on. And to have them spawn periodically, we also need to talk about setting up some kind of a timer. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's open up our development environment. So here we are with IntelliJ, and we have our Plane Dodger game class. And we've added the sky and the ground and the player Next, it's time to add the enemies, right? And the enemies are going to spawn later on in the update function. We're definitely going to need to add them to a group. And right? so we'll set up an enemy group. In addition, we're going to load the texture used by the enemies during the initialize function. So we only really need to load it once. Let's say public texture enemy text. Finally, we're going to set up a timer. And so let's say public, now let's make this a double enemy timer. All right, now let's go to the initialize function and let's set all of these up. Okay, so first we'll create the enemy group. Enemy group equals a new group. I'm not going to add anything to this yet. Uh, let's see, wait, why is that underlined in red? Enemy group is a new group. Hmm. Oh, because enemy group is not a sprite. Enemy group, as the name indicates, is a group. All right. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and initialize the enemy texture. So enemy text equals new texture. In this case, we're using an image of a red plane. So from the images directory, uh, there's a red plane image. We'll use that. And finally, enemy timer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to keep track of how much time has gone by. We'll use this as kind of a countdown. Um, here, let's see. Maybe I'll start off at two seconds until the first enemy appears. All right, so during update, what are we going to do? So let's say uh, from the enemy timer, we're going to subtract 1 60th of a second. And because if this is updating at 60 frames per second, that's how much we want to decrease time by. That should be minus equals. Now, once we run out of time, right, if enemy timer is ever less than zero, right, it's time to spawn a new enemy. So we'll, we'll create a new sprite. And then, let's see, enemy.setTexture, right, we set up the enemy text and initialize. Uh, this enemy will go ahead and set the physics, be a new physics object. Uh, we want the enemies to move at some speed, right, we need to figure out what that speed's going to be, but for now let's put in maybe a maximum speed of I don't know, maybe 800? 
And at first, they certainly will not be going that fast, but we do want to speed them up over time. Uh, let's say enemy.physics.setSpeed. Right, let's initially set the speed to, I don't know, 200. Right, and then enemy.physics.setMotionAngle. We're going to make that 180 so that they're moving to the left. And then, let's say to the enemy group, we'll add this enemy object. Also, once the timer goes down to zero, we're going to want to reset the timer. All right, so let's set that back to two seconds. All right, and this should spawn an enemy. In addition, um, once the enemies go past the left-hand side of the screen, we're going to want to remove them from memory as well. But for now, uh, let's see if this works. So this is running, and ideally every two seconds we should see an enemy spawn somewhere. <laughs> oh, but you know what? We didn't say where the enemies are going to spawn. And I suspect they're going to be spawning in the upper left-hand corner. You always need to remember to set a position. Okay, so after we set the texture, let's do this. Let's say enemy.setPosition to somewhere right off the right-hand side of the screen. Let's make this maybe 900. Right, so that's definitely off the right-hand side of the screen. In fact, 700 is probably closer. Followed by... See, for later on, we're going to randomize the height. But for now, let's say 400. So that should be right in the middle of the screen. All right, now that we've set the position, now hopefully we'll see an enemy appear about every two seconds. Right, so I don't care about the player plane. Let two seconds go by. Let's see, are we seeing an enemy plane? Hmm. No enemy plane, what could be happening? Let's see, so we set the speed. We set the physics, we added the enemy group. Oh, do you know what? We always have to be careful to make sure everything gets added everywhere. So we added the enemy to enemy group, but we never added enemy group to the main group. Now remember, we're using a tree-like structure, including nested groups. And that code wasn't wrong. We just, we hadn't added the enemy group to the group. So the enemies we were spawning weren't connected through to the main group. Now, it's our third time, right? Third time's the charm, so let's see if this works. So two seconds go by, I wanna see an enemy spawn right there. Hey, another two seconds goes by. Hey, look, we're getting a nice stream of enemies. Very cool, that's what I was hoping to see. All right, as a next step, let's go ahead and randomize their position. And so right now they're all spawning at 400, but let's make a double enemy Y. And now if we do math.random, that gives us a number from 0 to 1. Right? But maybe I want the enemy's Y coordinate to be somewhere between maybe 100 and 700. Right? So that's a range of 600 plus 100. And so math.random times 600, that gives us a random number from 0 to 600. Adding 100 shifts that from 0 to 600 to the interval 100 to 700. All right, let's use enemy y here. All right, so now we're going to run again. And now, in theory, every two seconds we should see enemies, but spawning at different locations. So two seconds goes by, two seconds goes by, oh, there's one down there, two seconds goes by, there's another one, there's another one, yep, sure enough. And we're getting these enemies to spawn at random directions. Very cool. Alright, so our next goal is going to be to get the enemies to get a little bit more difficult over time. Right now we're setting the enemy speed to 200. So maybe now we'll increase the speed over time. Right, to do that, we'll start off with, uh, by setting a public double enemy speed. 
right? Maybe the starting enemy speed, maybe we'll start off by making it pretty easy for the player. And so when we initialize all these enemy related variables, let's set enemy speed to uh, maybe just 100. And then we'll set the speed to enemy speed. Right, so this would cause all the enemies to go pretty slowly at first. What we can do here though, is after spawning this enemy, we can increase the value of enemy speed so the next enemy goes a little bit faster. So I'm going to say enemy speed plus equals 20 pixels per second. Right, and then they'll never go any faster than 800. But let's see how this looks. And I'm also going to make the enemies spawn a little bit more quickly. So maybe one every second. So we can see how fast they're going and if that seems reasonable. Right, so again, hopefully we're going to see some enemies spawn. Now one every second. And the first enemy should be going rather slow. Next one goes faster and then faster. Notice how these enemies are starting to catch up. <laughs> right? we, we definitely don't really want them to spawn every second because you saw that we could get a wall of enemies and that would make it impossible for the player to win. Right now these are moving faster and faster and faster. Right, so the game's definitely getting harder as time goes on. Right, and I'm not sure, maybe the speed of 800 might be too fast. They're, they're really zipping along. And the longer we wait, the faster they're going to go. If the screen width is 600 pixels, that means the enemies will pass by in less than a second. So maybe what we'll do, maybe we'll actually cap this speed at 600. Right? We'll change the enemy timer back to 2 seconds, so one enemy spawning every 2 seconds. And maybe we'll make this change more gradual. Maybe we'll just have them increase in speed by 10 units a second. And so now, if we run, and this will be closer to what the player will really experience. It'll take a while for the enemies to get up to their maximum speed. Let's let that player plane just drop away. Because there's the first one, and the second one, and the third one. It's actually a little bit strange because the enemies are going a little bit slower than the ground. It kind of looks like they're hovering. So you know what? Actually, I do want to start the enemy speed a little bit faster. And how fast is the ground going? The ground is going 150. So to make sure the enemies look like they're actually moving, I want the enemy base speed to be faster than the speed of the ground, right? So they don't look like they're hovering. All right, one more run, and then I think I'll stop tweaking these different values. But of course, in your own copy of the code, you're welcome to tweak these as much as you want. You can have the enemies spawn more quickly, totally up to you. And sure enough, here come some enemies. And as time goes on, they'll start to move a little bit faster and a little bit faster. All right, so now we have an obstacle. We haven't actually set up the code where the player overlaps with the enemy and the player's destroyed. We'll save that till later on. But for now, this is good progress. So I think we'll stop this video here. And in the next video, we'll add a collectible object, in this case, stars. And so while the player is dodging these enemies, the player will also have to collect stars to earn points. So we'll talk about that more in the next video. Thanks for watching.